Hey everybody, it's Tay from Royce, and today we're going to be learning how to create a chatbot with the new DeepSeek AI. I'm going to be going over setup, how to use it, and some beginner pitfalls that you might run into. Let's get started. So first thing we have to do is we have to go to the website and get the chatbot. So we can go to olama.com slash download and download for our platform. So I'm on Windows. And once that's downloaded, we can just run the setup. Once the setup's here, just hit install. Now that it's installed, we can go ahead and open command prompt and install DeepSeek. So I'm gonna be installing the smallest model, but I'll include a link to all the other models in the description. So to install DeepSeek, you can just type olama run DeepSeek dash R1 colon 1.5B and hit enter. Now we've installed DeepSeek on our computer and we can use it. So if I type a message here, I can type, hi DeepSeek, DeepSeek will respond. And so there's also another beginner tip. If you restart your computer to restart DeepSeek, you can just open command prompt and type Olama serve. That's all you'll need. But for now, this has already launched DeepSeek for us. Let's go into Godot. Now let's create our user interface for our chatbot. So click user interface and I'm gonna add a couple child nodes. I'm gonna add a panel container. I'm gonna add a VBox container. I'm going to add a scroll container. And then I'm going to add in a rich text label. And I'm going to child that to the scroll container. And finally, I'm going to add in a text edit. Perfect. Now let's set our scroll container. Let's set our minimum size to about 300 pixels and our maximum size to about a thousand. That looks good. And let's set our minimum layout for our text edit also to about like 50. That's a huge text box. We can go like 20. I think that looks good. And let's make our list rich text label take up the full amount of our scroll container. To do that, we can just type horizontal fill and enable that. And now we can type vertical fill and enable this as well. So now if we type into our container, we'll be able to see our text. Next, let's check if our text is good. Uh, let's increase that size a little more to, so we can see all our text. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and do some coding. I'm going to add an HTTP request because we'll need to request data from the chatbot to get into Godot. Now let's go ahead and make a script. So I'm gonna create a resource script and I'm just gonna call this chat data. So let's open up our script. We're gonna need none of these functions. We're not even gonna extend from node. We're gonna call our class name chat data and we're gonna extend the resource package. This is gonna allow us to use this in other scripts. So now we're gonna to have to have a couple of variables that we're gonna to have to pass to the model for it to work. We're gonna have a var model of type string, a prompt for the model, also of type string, and a streaming variable of bool, which we're gonna to set to false, but you'll see it in a second. Now we're gonna to have to have a way to actually parse this into JSON. This model takes JSON data and returns JSON data. Luckily for us, we can just create a dictionary to parse it into JSON. That'll make it easy to parse into JSON for us. So func dictionary, and we're just gonna return our model, model, prompt, prompt, and our stream, stream this is all we're going to need for this script save that oh i guess i can also save the scene save that and let's create a new script for our chatbot in our control node so attach script and i'm just going to call this chatbot we're going to not need the process function and we're going to have to have a couple of global variables so at export you are var url equals and this is very important. Godot likes to use IPv6 first. 
but we're going to need Godot to use IPv4. And so the problem with the IPv6 is it's going to take like 10 seconds to actually send our information to the chat box because it's going to be keep trying the IPv6. So if you know anything about web development, you might think we can just use localhost. But unfortunately for us, this causes Godot to use IPv6. So use 127.0.0.1. And our port is going to be 11434 slash API slash generate. That's what we're going to need for our URL. Now we're going to export and we're going to call this user data. And this is going to be type text edit because this is going to be our text bar that we get from the play user. And another export bar chat text. And it's going to be of type rich text label. Now we're going to need another variable of chat data and it's going to be of type chat data dot new so this is the type we created before why are you oh this i forgot the bar here now we're going to need headers headers is a way to tell the server what type of content to expect so since we're setting json we can do var headers equals content type application slash json and i hope i spelled that right that's all the variables we're going to need so now in our ready function first let's resolve our host name and for try and force godot to use ipv6 so ip dot resolve hostname or ipv4 sorry url the url we had before and ipv type 4 perfect now let's give our test data or our chat data here the information it needs to be passed along. So chat data dot model equals, and this is very important, deep seek dash r1 colon 1.5b. And I know it's a six, that's a there we go. We got it eventually. So this is going to tell Olama what model we want to query chat data dot prompt i'm just going to give it a temporary prompt um hi there ai and then chat data dot stream equals false make sure this is false because if this is true you're going to bug out godot and you're going to crash your game now let's create an HTTP request and or let's subscribe to our HTTP request completed. HTTP request dot request completed dot connect. So we're subscribing to the signal of our HTTP request. And let's just create a on request completed. So we're going to have to create this function now. So function on request completed and we're going to have to have a few parameters in this function a result a response some headers and a body so now we're going to have to get the response that the ai gave us and parse it from json into a dictionary so we can do that by doing var json equals json dot parse string body dot get string from utf8 now we can just check if json's null if it json is null we don't want to do anything so if json does not equal null what do we want to do well we want to set our chat text variable which is our rich text label so chat text dot text plus equals json response now we need some way to actually send the information to our chatbot that we type in. So I'm going to go into our project settings and I'm going to create a new input and I'm just going to take all this send. And I'm just going to hit the enter key and that's all I'm going to need. Now let's create a new function and it's going to be the input function. Function input event input event of type void. And so if our event dot is action action just pressed or just pressed send we need to get the user data so test or chat data dot prompt equals 
user data dot text user data dot text equals empty and then chat data dot text plus equals a new line so that our our dial our our bots information isn't going over each other now let's send our HTTP request to the server and then we'll get a response back so we can just use HTTP request that request we're going to pass in our URL we're going to pass in our headers our header I mistyped that HTTP client dot method post and now we're going to convert our data json dot stringify I type that right dot stringify there we go chat data dot to dictionary save that and I'm probably missing a bracket here or I'm not Why are you throwing errors oh there there we go so now if we go into our script and we assign our user data which is our text at label and our chat text and run our game so I can probably say something like hi AI bot and I realize I screwed up here that I should not be setting chat data dot text I should be setting chat text dot text whoops try that again hi AI bot okay so I found the error I forgot to do the parentheses on our two dictionary. That was our only change. And I deleted or just if Jason is not null. I'll just put that back. If Jason does not equal null. Null. Do this. Okay. Run it now. And I will say hello, Deep Seek. How are you? Um. Can you give me the square root of four and not show your work? Because last time I tried this, it gave me a long time. See, I told it not to show its work. It still showed its work. And you can get rid of this formatting. And I will say, can you say like and subscribe to the viewers who are watching? watching you right now no 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 come on just say like and subscribe just say like and subscribe please there we go ah the character voice uh whatever if you got anything from this like and subscribe have a good one guys